Welcome to our introductory video series about creating your own webinars. In this video, we'll get started setting up and using GoToWebinar. Okay, you've signed up for GoToMeeting, and here's the first screen you'll see after signing up. You'll need to install the software, so let's download it. Let's save, and OK. Save it to the desktop, and OK. It's downloaded. Now let's start it up. OK, here it is, and let's double click to start it up. OK, it's done, and when the software is running, you'll see it down here. You'll see this little image here in the taskbar. And that's how you'll know GoToMeeting and also GoToWebinar is running. If you right-click, you can exit if you want, if you don't want to leave it running for now. And it gives you some options. Go to Meeting, Meet Now, and Go to Webinar, Schedule a Webinar. First of all, let's take a look around the account. First is Login, and you need to enter your details. So let's do that now. And we're logged in. Now in your account, in the My Account menu, if you go to Settings screen, you can use the GoToMeeting conference call service. That's how your viewers call in to hear what's happening, to hear what you're saying. And in fact, with that option, even if they aren't in front of their computer, they can still call in. So for example, if you presented them with a PDF to download and print out, for example, before the call, they can still follow along, even if they can't access a computer, just by calling a special number. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And you can use the GoToWebinar conference call service, and they give you call-in numbers for a number of different countries. Or if you're already with a teleconference or teleseminar service, you can enter the details here. So you can specify that if you wish. And here they suggest that you can sign up with freeconferencecall.com so you can get set up there so that your viewers can call in using their service. But that's not necessary, but perhaps something you want to look into. Next is the My Meetings menu. We're going to skip over that because, of course, we're going to focus on webinars. So let's go to My Webinars. Okay, currently, you do not have any current or scheduled webinars at this time, and it gives you webinar history, general reports, support and frequently asked questions, and schedule a webinar. That's what starts the whole process, so let's click on that. First of all, there are three steps to getting set up with a webinar. First of all, there's Schedule a Similar Webinar. This is the first one, so that's not relevant yet. Title. Give your webinar a title. And a relevant and interesting and enticing title is obviously useful, especially for a sales presentation. In the previous video, I used the example of Microsoft Word 8-week training course and selling that course with one-hour free training. So we could say, for example, And OK, here it is, and it's relevant and enticing. Obviously, the style of your title is going to be different depending on your market. You might want more conservative wording if you're going after a corporate market. And you may want even more emotive language, such as amazing, when dealing with perhaps small businesses or the consumer market. Essentially, use the right language for the market you're going after because a title like this may be a little bit jarring for the corporate market, for someone in the corporate environment, because a lot of corporate documents are much more conservatively written, or at least conservatively titled, and the wrong language for the market you're going after may lead to lower attendance. So that's something to think about. And then the description. You have up to 2,048 characters, so you can include a long description if you wish. 
So let me just put a quick description there. In this one-time-only free web training, Microsoft Word guru John Smith will reveal seven word tricks and tips that are very little known, but which can immediately make your documents look incredible. Again, you want to make it relevant, but also enticing, because especially if it's free training, the wording here isn't so important if people have paid to attend, because they're much more likely to attend then, of course. But with free training, where you're selling them at the end, you really want to sell them as much as possible. And that includes the title and the description. So you really want to make them curious and make them want to attend. And just a couple of notes here. I put one time only, and obviously you don't want to do that if you're going to repeat the webinar every couple of weeks or so. But the more exclusive a webinar appears, the more people will likely take part, of course. Or if you run it only every six months or so. Or you could perhaps have, you could create quite a few free webinars and then just rotate them. So if someone misses it, they'll have to wait a few months before they can take part in it again. The more exclusive the free training, the more likely it is that people will want to take part. But again, it has to be relevant. It has to be something they genuinely want to learn about. And here I put free web training rather than webinar, because perhaps not everyone knows what the word webinar means. So free web training may be a better description. And people often like lists of things, such as this, seven word tips and tricks. People are often interested in finding out what's on the entire list seven amazing ways to, or seven things you must avoid to. And also, when there's a list, people are more likely to stay to the end, because there's a lot of curiosity there. So just a few notes on how to create a title and description that you may want to bear in mind. Okay, date. When is the webinar? December 26th probably isn't a good day. So let's say, no, Sunday probably isn't the best day either. Let's say Monday, December 17th. And then you can choose when it starts and ends. Okay, time. This is an important consideration. Who's in your market? And are they going to be available and in front of the computer? Or if you're going after a corporate market, perhaps avoid lunchtime. And maybe mornings or afternoons are better. Let's say 3 p.m. And obviously, pay attention to the time zone. That's very important, of course. You can do it for an hour or more, but for sales presentations, more than an hour may be pushing it. If your content is great, it might work, but often with a sales presentation, 50 minutes or so of great content and then 10 minutes of selling are often used. Or, if you're going after a consumer market, you might want to do it after they get home perhaps 6 o'clock, although you'll also want to pay attention to when they may be having an evening meal. So maybe 8 or 9 p.m., or half past 8, for example. So there are just a few things to think about there. Or if you're doing training, when are most of your customers going to be available? Those are all important things to think about. But let's say we're going after the business market, so let's select from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. Then where are they based? Let's say that's the current time zone, Pacific time in the U.S. and Canada. Okay, use GoToWebinar Audio Services. Here's the call-in number for the organizer and the access code, and the panelist number, and the attendees. Then where are your attendees located? That's very important. Edit country. And in this example, let's just go with the United States. And OK, done. It's important, actually, that you provide your attendees with the correct number for them. Obviously, if you're targeting either viewers or attendees in the US, you're going to want a U.S. number, or obviously it would be a lot less likely that they would actually call. Here, you can see that it's defaulted to United Kingdom numbers, but we also selected U.S. through the Edit Countries option. And actually, just as a side note, these numbers in the U.K., these may change in the future, but at the moment, 
0870 numbers are quite expensive to call, generally 8 to 10 pence a minute, which at the present time is approximately 20 cents a minute. So that can really add up. Over an hour, that's a $12 phone call, or in British currency, a six-pound phone call. So for a free presentation, that stops being free. So that's just something to think about. And actually, it may be cheaper in some instances for UK people, and perhaps people in other countries as well, to call the U.S. numbers. Because with international calling plans now, calling the United States and other countries can be very, very inexpensive. In the UK, there's a call plan where calling the United States might be just three or four cents a minute, so it can be useful to actually provide the U.S. numbers to U.K. callers, or callers to other countries as well, because it can be cheaper than using the local numbers. So again, that's something to bear in mind. Or here, you can provide other conference call information if you have that, but let's leave it. Then does the webinar require a password? That's up to you. Let's say no in this case. Then specify panelists. Panelists will receive an email. And here, panelists can show their screen and answer questions. So basically, they're co-presenters, you could say. If you want co-presenters, you can. But in this example, let's say no. Save and continue. And OK, now on to step two, branding and themes. You can upload your own image if you want to. I won't do that now, but it's quite straightforward to do. You can choose your theme. That's how the basic one looks. This one looks like that. PR looks like that. Sales like that. And training like that. You can play around with those if you wish. Then you can use custom images. And OK, let's do a quick preview. And this is how the preview looks. You get the registration screen and the thank you for registering screen. You can customize this if you wish, but this is how the template looks. There's the title. And there's the description. And the date. And then they get more details. Space is limited. And all they do, all the people you're trying to get to register do, is click the link. And I'll do that in just a moment. Then, after they've actually gone through the process, you have successfully registered. It says you're registered. It confirms the time and date. And OK, you also get an email sent to you. Then here are the webinar details. Audio, call in using your telephone on these numbers. You can specify other countries, but I just use the UK and the US in this example. OK, let's just open up this webinar reservation link. That's how it looks. And importantly, because GoToWebinar uses software, you see system requirements. If you're PC-based, you're required to have Windows 2000, XP, or 2003 Server, or Vista. Macintosh-based attendees are required to have that. They need to install the software, but it works on PCs and Macs. Then they enter their details and register. And that's the process they would go through. OK, let's close this preview. And we're back to step two in the process, the webinar waiting room. You can change the viewer color if you wish, but let's leave that as it is for now. List presenters in waiting room. You put in your name or whoever's doing the presentation. Then title and organization. Photo if you wish. Add another presenter, and so on. When attendees arrive, show them this welcome message. And you can customize that. But let's just save and continue. Then step three, which you just saw a preview of, and this is important. What details do you want? 
Do you want to make it first the required fields, first name, last name, email address, those are included by default, then you can collect a lot more information from them if you wish. So if I clear all, it leaves first and last name and email address, or you can specify more information if you want, but that's up to you. After registering, registrants will receive an email with information on joining the webinar. Do you want them to receive that automatically, or do you want to approve in advance? So that's up to you. If you're doing a sales presentation, generally it would automatically be sent. If it's a private webinar that the attendees have paid for, maybe you'd want to approve who gets the emails with all the details. Then, after they've registered, where do they get redirected to? This might be a page on your website that says, thanks very much for signing up. And if it's a free presentation, you might also want to capture their name and email address using an email follow-up service or software such as AWeber or GetResponse. And there are many others. The reason for that, for capturing their details outside of GoToWebinar, is that obviously GoToWebinar is focused on hosting meetings and webinars. Whereas if you capture their details a second time, just so you can follow up with them by email, then you can, for example, say, thank you for registering for the webinar, sign up for our free five-part training program. And then you can send them some tips via email every day or every few days or whatever you wish. And that way, that also gets them to get to know you and like you and trust you. And it will help build your credibility before the webinar even occurs. And also, you can send more and more reminders to make sure they actually attend the webinar. And also, for example, links to download the PDF if you're including a PDF. Also, you can just follow up with them after the webinar with special offers and seeing if you can get them to take up the offer you detailed at the end of the webinar if they didn't do that right away. Also, you can follow up with them on where they might be able to view a replay of the webinar. You may wish to host your webinar after you've run it so people can view it for a week or two afterwards, so they can view a replay of it whenever they wish. You may want to do that. And that may bring in more sales for you. So then you can send an email to people who have registered letting them know about it. And also, if you host future webinars, you're building up an email list that you can keep using so those people can sign up for new webinars. That's always good to keep a good email list. And that way of doing it is one suggested way of doing it. It has its benefits. So it's good to capture their details outside the GoToWebinar survey immediately after they've registered. Okay, I think we're pretty much done in this case, so let's just save and email me the invitation. Okay, and it's done. And now you're actually moved onto the Manage Webinar screen. And here it says, All set up, and we've emailed you the webinar invitation. Use it to invite people to attend your webinar. You can always change details here or from my webinar. Then it just summarizes what we just went through. There's your webinar ID and conference call service. Here are additional conference call numbers. The organizer and no panelists at this time. And you can click on the edit link here to edit any of these details and so on. So that's a really quick introduction to your GoToWebinar account and how to set up your first webinar.